I have a pumpkin that I got from Dollar Tree and I already removed the top of it. And then what I've done is I've come in with some hand, sanit hand sanitizer from Dollar Tree and I've cleaned the pumpkin. I'm then going to come in and I'm going to be using some Americana Decor Chalky Finish and this is the color Artifact. And basically what it is, it's, it's a medium to light gray. I'm just using this because um, the orange is hard to cover and I want to really make sure I clarify that orange before I put the metallic color on. So I just love how thick and creamy this chalky paint is um, by Deco Art, and it's going to give me a really nice coat so then I can come in and just put the other finish on top of it. I prefer using a brush to a foam brush because um, I think it's easier to control and get a nice thinner coat and then also I use less paint um, with a regular brush then as opposed to a foam brush. So the gray has dried on the pumpkin and I'm going to come in and I'm going to put one thin coat of tin all over it. I'm going to apply this in the same way that I applied the chalky finish and it just sticks so easily because that chalky finish paint was down. And I don't have to wear, uh, worry about any adhering problems. I found this really cute pot at Dollar Tree, and so what I'm going to do is I want to make this galvanized so that I can put a really pretty arrangement in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this, um, this scarecrow. So I removed the scarecrow by using a screwdriver, and what I found is that um, I actually put some holes in the um, pot, but I'm not too worried about that. I can always come in with some kind of label or just make it look a little bit more aged, which is really what I want to, to do anyway. But what I will do is I'm going to come in and sand these areas because they're kind of sharp. So since I've got some dents in here from when I was prying the um, scarecrow off, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my screwdriver and make some more dents periodically in here to just make it look like we're going to eventually make it look like it's rusty and make it look like it's an oil can. Then I'm going to come back in with my Artifact Chalky Paint and just go over the whole the whole bucket. And I love the little areas that I put some dings in. I think that's making it look really cool. I do want to keep my strokes fairly even and make sure that I don't have any strokes showing because since uh, we're going to make this look like it's metal, we want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay, then I'm going to set this aside and let this dry. Okay, so this is all done now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing to my pot.
dry and I'll come back and show you the next step. This is a seawool sponge that you can get at craft stores and I just keep it in my craft stash because I use it for so many things. And I'm going to start with my pumpkin and I have a little bit of the lamp, lamp black paint here. And I'm going to put my seawool sponge in it and then I load it and offload it so that we don't have very much paint in here because you don't want to have too much paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and just add some texture. I want this to look more like it is uh, galvanized. So I'm touching very lightly all over the pumpkin. We should get the top too. Okay, I'll set that to the side and let it dry. I'm going to do the bucket in the same manner. I love all the dings that I put in and I think it really is going to help make it look aged. to use the antique bronze and I'm going to coat just the edges with the antique bronze. And now I've got the same sponge and it's loaded with the black still and I'm going to pick up just a little bit of white, not much at all. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to add some highlights every now and then. I'll use less of the white than I did with the black. I'm going to do the same thing to the pumpkin. Now I'm done with the sponge so I can go ahead and I can put it into a tub of water or go clean out my sponge. I need to come in and change the color of the little top of the pumpkin, the stem. So what I'm going to do is come in and coat it with Artifact. It's the same color that I used on the pumpkin. We'll let this dry and then I'm going to come over and coat it antique bronze. I have some extreme sheen silver. I'm going to put that on um, my palette paper or you could use a foam plate. I'm also going to put out the antique bronze and I'm going to add just a little bit of black to it, the lamp black that I had. I love that that's a, like a really vintage looking bronze and that's going to be perfect for the sides of the pumpkin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thin the silver with water because I want it to be translucent. And the extreme the extreme sheen brand is just so nice and thick and lush. It really has a nice opaque coverage. And in this case I want it the texture that we just put on to glow through. So I'm going to just take my brush and make a big puddle of this over here with a little bit of water in it. And we're going to just go right over where we put all that texture. And I want the paint thin enough so that texture will glow through, but it's going to look like it's metallic. And it will look like it's galvanized metal when we're done. And I'll continue this 
other way around. Okay, in the same manner, we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to come in with our thinned silver. Okay, we're going to let this dry and I'll be back. Okay, the pumpkin's dry and with this mixture of the antique bronze and black, I'm going to use an old brush that's kind of splayed out and I'm just going to pounce or stipple in the grooves of the pumpkins. And I do this very loose, loosely. It should not be a solid coverage. When I have a little bit of texture. If you miss a little bit, that's fine because this is supposed to be aging it so it wouldn't be perfectly all nice and neat. We're going to set that to the side, let that set up. Now for the bucket, I have a completely different brush and I'm going to stick it in the paint and then work it in so there's hardly anything there. And I'm going to just drag it on here. 
and try to make some make it look a little bit aged. take this brush that I just stippled the pumpkin with and in some of the grooved areas I really want to make sure I get in there and accent those. Not necessarily all of them. Some of them might be newer dings than others. I want to put some along the bottom and just bring it up a little bit. Now it's a little bit up at the top. Okay, we'll let that dry. I thought it would be really cool to really actually make some rust, so I found the sand at Dollar Tree, and I want to be careful that I don't get this all over the place. I was hoping it would be in a resealable bag. So what I'm going to do is just pour some on my plate. So I have some traditional burnt sienna. I'm putting some of that out and I'm going to mix just enough sand into the paint to get some texture. So now what I'm going to do is come in in some of those areas where I kind of stippled along here. We're going to apply some of this rust. And I will even scrape some periodically on the can, especially by where the dings are. Make this area nice and rusty. Add just a little bit to the pumpkin too. I don't want too much of this copper color on here or rust color. I just want to indicate that it's a little bit old and it might have some rust on it. some smaller pumpkins to go with these so I got these and they're kind of uh, almost has a metallic feel to them even though they're not metallic so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and just put a coat of the darkened antique bronze on here These colors are going to glow through. I may do this application twice, um, but I wanted the oranges to show through because it kind of gives it the feel that it's like an antique copper, which is very cool. Okay, now it's drying. I'm going to come in with a little bit of my black color and my sponge like I did to the pumpkins and the bucket. 
and I'm very lightly going to go over this. I just want to age it. I don't want to galvanize it. What I can do is take my clean set if I get too much on it and very quickly soften it. Now I'm going to go over it again with the just plain antique bronze and it's thinned down a little bit so all this glows through. It's just going to look like it's aged metal. To, to create these leaves, the first thing I did was get a package of the maple leaves from Dollar Tree, and there's 50 in them. And I want to say that all packages are different. Some of them have these um, fabric type leaves, others have metallic leaves. So you never know exactly what you're going to get, but they're all pretty much the same shape. And so I decided to use some red ones. I also got some of the yellow orange ones and then um, for the smaller ones you can either use the green or the there's also some yellow. I'm using the Deco Art Extreme Machine. I just love this for coverage and it has more metal pigments than any metal paints that I've seen on the market. And then I also have just a little bit of Lamp Black out um, just from their Americana line. And we're going to make some vintage leaves with these colors. So I'm going to start out. And, um, and I have a uh, paper plate. You can use a foam plate from Dollar Tree. Those make great palettes to hold your paint and to paint on top of. So you can see how amazing this covers. Uh, most metallic paints are very transparent and this pretty much in one cover, one coating covered it. And so what I want to do is just pick up a little bit of black in my paint and just kind of make, come in and make it look a little bit more aged. And then I'll do the same thing over here where I will coat it first. And then I'll come in with just a little bit of the black. So what I'm going to do is I've got a pen and I'm going to leave a little bit out. And what I'm going to do is wrap it around the pen until it's about two inches long. And you can see I'm, what I'm doing is pushing it close together with my finger as I wrap it. Okay, and then what I'll do is take some wire cutters and clip it. And slide it off my pen. Then I just pull it a little bit and tuck this end in. So what I'm doing is I'm going to put my leaves together and I'm going to first take and I'm going to put some tacky glue on the outside and Dollar Tree sells um, this in a little bit smaller bottle which I really like because then the bigger bottles just dry up too fast. So I'll do that on two of the leaves. So I'll do this on all of the leaves. I only have to put it on one side because we're going to put the two together. And then I have 
I have the underside of the smaller leaf too that I'm going to put this on. And then I have some thinner wire that's approximately the same color as the leaves. This is not necessary. It doesn't have to be the same color. It could be silver. I know Dollar Tree does sell both silver and um, green, and so it would be better to use the silver. But I had this in my craft stash, and so I'm going to use this. In the scope of what's important, the color of the wire really isn't that important. So I'm just wrapping this around to make like a little cross. Okay, and then I'm going to take my hot glue. And I'm going to set that down so I don't burn my fingers. And I'll simply place the wire in the, in the hot glue, and then I'm going to take one of the leaves that does not have the um, glue on it and just push these together. I use the tacky glue so that the seams come together. And once it's cool enough, you can take your fingers and push it into place, and I'm going to do this with all three of them. So the leaves are all dry and I'm going to put them in the pumpkin, but the first thing I did was poke a few extra holes in here. And I want to put a little bit of glue in here and we're going to go ahead and stick the wires in one of the holes. And what's really nice is now that the wires in here is you can form the leaves into different shapes and make them stay. We have two big leaves and then we have the one small leaf. Then I also have my coil. I'm going to put that around here so make another hole. I'm going to put just a little bit more glue in here. And then I'm going to glue my stem in place. And just before everything dries, you can look and make sure that you've got this balanced the way you want it. I'm going to move the leaf over here a little bit more and lift this up. And I might pull this out. It's a little bit cuter and curve it around a little bit. Oh, that's looking so cute. Then also for the antique bronze pumpkins, I'm going to just put one silver leaf and I've come in and I've poked a hole in here with a nail. Just put a little glue in. And I painted these tin. I just want to make sure that it's nice and close. So I think one leaf will make it look really cute. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up and show you how lovely the bucket looks with flowers in it and how all these pumpkins look. And then I also painted some more, I also painted some more of the tin leaves so I can scatter those around too. I just love the way that these turned out. I think this is just good to make such a beautiful table setting for my Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm going to keep this up off during the autumn season. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you really enjoyed learning how to make faux industrial chic items for your fall table decor. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and please give me a thumbs up so that I know that you've enjoyed the video that I created. Until next time, may painting always bring you joy.